Well, there is nothing to be scared of. This is just one of the several examples of friction which we use in our daily life. So, today we are going to study about this topic, this particular topic friction. Now, what actually is this friction? Whenever there is a tendency of relative motion between two bodies, a resisting force develops between the surface of the two bodies. That resisting force is nothing but a friction. There is a, whenever there is a relative motion, the tendency of relative motion. That means either there is a relative motion or there is a tendency of relative motion between the two bodies. So, a resisting force develops between the two bodies, that resisting force is nothing but friction. Now, friction is said to be a necessary evil. Why is it necessary evil? Because friction is necessary for performing almost each and every task in our daily life. I mean, you cannot imagine your life without friction. It is necessary for, for everything. For suppose I am holding this pen. So, friction is necessary to hold this pen. If a boy is walking on the ground, friction is necessary to walk for, a boy, for the boy to walk on the ground. If a boy is driving a bicycle or a bike, friction is necessary to have a grip between the road and the tire. So, friction is necessary for everything. But at the same time, friction is bad also. That is why friction is called as necessary evil. Now, why is this friction bad? On one hand, when friction is responsible, when friction is necessary for a boy to walk on the ground, at the same time, friction is also responsible for its, for the wear of, wear of its shoes. On one hand, friction is necessary for a boy to drive a bicycle. On the other hand, friction is also responsible for wear of the, of those tires. On one hand, friction is necessary to transmit power in many devices like in bell drives, like in clutches, like in ropes. These are the devices which uses friction to transmit the power. On the other hand, friction is a major source of power loss in most of the machines, in many machine, machines. So, friction is called as the necessary evil. You cannot skip from the friction. Friction is necessary for you, but at the same time, it is bad also. It Because of the friction, the power also loses lost. Okay, so, we have to make a, a, a balance of this uh, friction loss and the use of this friction. Now, this friction can be either a dry friction or it can be a fluid friction. Now, what actually is a dry friction? So, when the friction takes place between two unlubricated surfaces, as I told you, suppose a boy is walking on the ground, the friction between the shoes of the boy and the ground is nothing but the dry friction between two unlubricated surfaces is the dry friction. And when the friction is taking place between two lubricated surface or between a surface and a liquid or a fluid, then that is called as wet friction. For example, a boy swimming or a boy skydiving. So, this is called as the fluid friction. Further, on the basis of type of contact, fr friction can be classified into sliding friction or it can be a rolling friction. Now, what actually is a sliding friction? When two bodies are sliding relative to each other. For example, suppose we have a block on this table and this block is sliding over this table. The kind of friction which develops between this block and the table is nothing but the sliding friction. Now, what is a rolling friction? When one body rolls over the other body, for example, a ball is rolling over the ground, the kind of friction developed is nothing but the rolling friction. Now, let us start with the dry friction with a sliding contact. Now, suppose we have a table and on this table a block is placed and I am applying a force on this block. Now, what will happen? Now, I will draw the free body diagram of this particular block, removing this table. So, because I am applying a force on this block, a frictional force will be developed on the contact surface between the block and the table. So, if I draw the free body diagram, this frictional force will be in opposite direction. Okay. Apart from this, a weight of this block is acting vertically downward. In order to balance this weight, a reaction force will act in upward direction. Now, you can see one thing. The force here and the frictional force here are not in the same line of action. That means, they are producing a clockwise moment. So, in order to balance this clockwise moment, the reaction which is acting also is not in, con not in line of contact with the weight. There will be some gap between these two. So, as to balance this moment. 
okay but generally we ignore that and we generally take in it in into the line of action of the uh, weight we generally take the action into line of action of the brain and the reaction is acting vertically upward in the same line of action the force acting here and the frictional force acting here this is generally we draw so as to uh, simplify this okay but the exact diagram is like this there is some distance between the line of action of this weight and the reaction so as to balance this couple getting this or not okay now let us analyze this thing very carefully now what is what actually is happening when i am applying a force on this particular block okay so when i am applying a force on this block let us draw the graph between frictional force f and applied force p okay so what is happening when i am applying a force on this the force is increasing as well as the friction force is also increasing okay so it will make a straight line up to a certain point okay now at any at a, at a particular point this block is at the verge of motion okay at this point the friction is nothing but the maximum friction f max the frictional force developed is nothing but the maximum friction when the block is at the verge of slipping when the block is at the verge of motion okay after this point the the force suddenly decreases the force required to move the object is more and once the object starts moving then less force comparatively less force is required okay then the force decreases and then it remains constant like this okay so this is the region of static friction okay and once it starts moving then it comes to the region of kinetic friction getting is not static friction and kinetic friction okay and this is the called as impending motion impending motion means the motion is just to start that condition is called as the condition of impending motion okay now one thing here this f max the maximum force maximum static force this is directly proportional to the reaction developed it was observed that this f max is directly proportional to the reaction force okay and if you remove this proportionality constant you will get what this f max is equal to mu into r or you can say mu s into r and this mu s is nothing but coefficient of friction or coefficient of static friction to be specific the friction acting when the body is at rest coefficient of static friction okay and once the body starts moving this friction will be converted to the coefficient of kinetic friction therefore fk this will be equal to mu k into r where mu k is coefficient of kinetic friction getting this now okay and as i told you that this the value of this fk is less than f max the kinetic force required fk is less than the static force required f max therefore the coefficient of friction mu k is also less than mu s this is very important okay so more amount of force is required in order to start the motion but once the motion is started the amount of force required is less that means the kinetic force is less than that of the maximum static force or you can say the kinetic friction is less than the maximum static friction or coefficient of kinetic friction is less than the coefficient of static friction getting this now okay now this leads to certain laws of friction now what are the laws of friction the first law uh, the first law says that the total friction force developed is independent of the area of contact the frictional force developed is independent of the area of contact and it depends only on the 
nature of surface of contact that means the coefficient of friction it is not depending upon area of contact it is just depending upon the coefficient of friction and coefficient of friction varies from material to material if uh, the block is uh, sliding on a glass it will have a different coefficient of friction if the same block is uh, sliding on a concrete it will have a different coefficient of friction okay so the frictional force does not depend on the area of contact it just depends upon the nature of surface of contacts first thing second thing this total frictional force f max is directly proportional to the normal reaction or normal force transmitted across the surface surface of contact okay total frictional force f max is directly proportional to the normal reaction acting at the surface of contact for second thing okay third thing the force required to start the body as i told you the force required to start the motion of the body is more as compared to the force required to move the body further okay so these are three laws of friction first law the total friction fo frictional force does not depends on the area of contact it just depends upon the uh, nature of surface of contacts second thing total frictional force is directly proportional to the normal reaction acting and third thing the force required to start the motion of the body is more as compared to the force required to move the body further okay so these are three basically basic laws of friction now coming to the reason why this frictional force is developed suppose we have this block on any surface and we are applying a force on this block now what actually happens why this frictional force is getting developed why this resistance force is getting developed now if we, if i if i uh, see this surface in a microscope if i see this a small surface in a microscope what i will find is there are many irregularities between these surfaces okay the surface of contact is somewhat like this rather than just being a plain surface or a smooth surface so this surface of contact is like this okay there are many irregularities between the surface so what is happening when one surface is sliding over the other surface because of this irregularities it will get interlocked between the there will be interlock between the two surfaces okay so the force applied should be greater than the force that is required in order to the overcome that interlocking force getting this or not so for this reason a resisting force is developed in the opposite direction to that of the force applied so this is the reason why frictional force developed so you can you have seen one thing that more smooth the surface is less will be the friction okay suppose in glass we what what we do in glass we just polish it again and again and again okay more it will be polished more smoother the surface will be and less will be the friction because the irregularities vanishes more you polish that surface the irregularities vanishes more and less will be the friction or coefficient of friction getting this one okay now next is angle of friction okay so considering the same example a block a force is applied in right direction okay and as a result of this a frictional force will be applied in just opposite direction the weight acting here the reaction force is acting here this is the frictional force getting this one okay now because at this particular point two forces are acting one is frictional force and one is the normal reaction let us consider this normal reaction as n normal reaction okay so because of these two forces these two perpendicular forces a resultant force will be developed in this direction okay suppose at an angle phi okay so this angle which this resultant force is making with the normal reaction phi is nothing but the angle of friction getting this or not the angle which resultant force is making with the normal reaction is nothing but the angle of friction okay and if you want to determine this normal reaction this r because these two are perpendicular forces we know how to determine the resultant of the resultant of two forces this will be equal to under root of f square plus n square okay and tan of phi how can you determine this tan of phi this tan of phi will be equal to what f upon n 
okay, okay. And as we know that f is equal to what? Mu into n as we have discussed f is directly proportional to the normal reaction n or f is equal to mu into n. So, this will be equal to mu into n upon n and then gets cancelled out this is equal to mu. Getting is so tan of phi is equal to coefficient of friction mu or phi is equal to tan inverse of mu. Okay, so, this is how we can determine the value of this angle of friction phi. Clear or not? Okay. Now, coming to the next topic which is cone of friction. Now, what is this cone of friction? As I told you the reaction force, the resultant force is acting in this direction. Now, what if I am rotating this block? Suppose we have this block. This is our block, the normal reaction acting here and the resultant force acting here r ok at an angle suppose phi ok. Now, what if I am rotating this suppose I am rotating this block by suppose 360 degree I am rotating this block by 360 degree. Now, as a result of this rotation this reaction r will also rotate like this it will also rotate in 360 degree and it will make a cone when this reaction r rotates in a 360 degree then it will make a cone like this. Getting this not ok. This cone is nothing but the cone of friction. This cone is nothing but the cone of friction ok. And if I am taking this as phi k that means kinetic angle of friction ok. Then the cone will be the kinetic cone of friction and if I take it as phi s and obviously the value of this phi s will be greater than that of the phi k because the value of mu s since mu s is greater than mu k therefore phi s will be greater than phi k ok. So, if I draw the phi s in the same figure it will be like this. This angle is nothing but phi s ok and if I turn this I will get one cone this cone is nothing but the static cone of friction ok. So, getting the difference between the static cone of friction and kinetic cone of friction ok. So, we have the resultant and we are rotating this body by 360 degrees. So, as a result of that this resultant force will make a cone that cone is nothing but the cone of friction clear or not. Now, what is the significance of this cone of friction? For static bodies in equilibrium the resultant force of bodies always lie within the cone whereas for a static body on the verge of motion the resultant force lies on the surface of the cone. This is the significance of this cone of friction ok. Next topic is the angle of repose. Now, what actually is this angle of repose? Suppose we have a surface and the block is kept on this surface, block of weight w is kept on this surface ok. Now, I am tilting this surface by certain angle ok. So, I am tilting the surface and let us suppose at an angle suppose theta at an angle suppose alpha consider this as alpha. Now, at this angle suppose this block starts moving starts sliding downward that means at this particular position the block is at the impending motion the motion is just to start ok. So, this angle initially I, ha I was having a flat plate a horizontal plate I am just tilting this. So, on tilting at a particular angle this block is at the verge of motion the impending motion. So, that angle with horizontal alpha is nothing but angle of repose getting this or not ok. The angle at which the block is at the verge of slipping clear or not that minimum angle is nothing but the angle of repose ok. Ok. So, so now let us draw the free body diagram of this block which is at an angle alpha we have this block. 
the weight of the block is acting vertically downward w weight and this is ten this tends to move in downward direction so the frictional force will act in just opposite direction f okay and apart from this a normal reaction will act normal to this surface suppose n getting this now okay so this angle is because this angle is alpha with al angle of this plane with horizontal is alpha okay so this plane is making an angle alpha with horizontal so the perpendicular plane will make an angle alpha with the vertical this angle will be alpha getting this or not okay so now resolving the forces in this two directions suppose this direction is x and considering this direction is y okay so summation of fx is equal to 0 and summation of fy is equal to 0 what will get now okay so here n will be equal to n vertically upward will be equal to w cos of alpha first thing second summation of fy is equal to 0 so f frictional force right side is equal to w sin of alpha okay and as we know frictional force f is nothing but mu into n so this will be mu into n minus w sin of alpha is equal to 0 just put the value of n from this equation n is w cos alpha is equal to w sin of alpha w w gets cancel out and you will get what tan alpha is equal to mu getting this so tan alpha is equal to mu or you can say mu is equal to what tan of phi so tan of alpha is equal to tan of phi so from here this alpha is equal to phi okay again a very important conclusion the angle of repose becomes equal to angle of friction however this two concepts are completely different okay but what we are getting is the angle of repose is equal to the angle of friction that is angle of repose is equal to angle of friction that's it getting this now okay okay so now we will solve some questions related to this topic of friction the very first question is we have a block of weight w a force p is applied at an angle theta we have to determine the minimum force in order to first pull the pull the block and second to push the block okay so how can we determine this minimum amount of minimum force required to pull and push the block so first is to pull the block solving the first part okay i will draw the free body diagram of this particular block how will be the free body diagram a weight acting downward a force p which is acting at an angle theta okay and because of this weight a reaction force will develop here r okay and because this is moving in this direction in in right direction so a frictional force will be developed in opposite direction mu into r getting is not okay so this p will have two components first is p cos of theta and second is p sin of theta okay now applying equilibrium equations summation of fx is equal to 0 so from here and summation of fy is equal to 0 okay so from summation of fy is equal to 0 w is equal to r plus p sin theta getting is summation of fx is equal to 0 so from here this p cos theta is equal to mu into r this was equation number 1 okay so from here we can get the value of r this r is equal to p cos theta by mu just put the value in equation number 1 so this w will be equal to p by mu cos theta plus p sin of theta just solve this so this will be w into mu is equal to p into cos theta plus mu sin of theta okay so from here we can get the value of p which is equal to mu into w upon cos theta plus mu sin of theta that's it okay so this is the value minimum value of p in order to pull the block now what if we want to push this block if if we want the same block to be pushed 
now we will draw the free body diagram okay now a pushing force is applied here at an angle theta p pushing force is applied at an angle theta okay now this block will tend to move towards left so a frictional force will be developed mu into r towards right a reaction will be developed r okay and apart from this a weight will be there w getting is now okay now just put equilibrium equations so summation of fx is equal to 0 and summation of fy is equal to 0 so from here we will get what mu into r is equal to p cos of theta or you can say r is equal to p cos theta by mu okay now second is summation of fy is equal to 0 so for summation of fy is equal to 0 here this will be r is equal to w plus p sin of theta r upward force is equal to w plus vertical component of this force p p sin of theta okay so just put the values so this will be equal to p by mu cos theta minus sin theta p sin theta is equal to w or you can say p into cos theta minus mu sin theta is equal to w into mu okay so from here this p minimum will be equal to mu into w upon cos theta minus mu sin of theta that's it clear or not okay so initially when the block was getting pulled that at that time p minimum was equal to mu into w upon cos theta plus mu sin theta and when the same block is getting pushed by an, at, at an angle theta then we got the answer as p minimum is equal to mu into w upon cos theta minus mu sin theta now which p is more which force is more whether the force required to pull the block is more or the force required to push the block is more so here suppose this is p1 so this p1 is mu into w upon cos theta plus mu sin theta and here it is mu into w upon cos theta minus mu sin theta so obviously this mu cos theta minus mu sin theta is less than this value cos theta plus mu sin theta this means p2 suppose this is p2 this means p2 is greater than p1 because the denominator is, le is less therefore p2 is greater than p1 that means in order to the force required in order to pull the block is less as compared to force required in order to push the block okay and the reason being very simple because when we are pushing this block one component of this low uh, one component of this force p is acting in vertically downward direction which is ultimately re resulting in the increase of this frictional force okay so the force required will be more in order to push the block and then in order to pull the block this is the reason why if you have seen the uh, a person pulling a, a road roller on a in a stadium or a or in a road okay so he just pulls that roller he does not push that roller this is the reason why why the pu pulling force is less getting this not okay next okay next question says <coughs> A strong box of mass 100 kg rests on a horizontal floor as shown. Coefficient of static friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.4. Determine the magnitude of P if the box is to slide towards left. Second, maximum value of H so that the under, under the action of force P, the block slips without tipping. Okay. So we have this question, we have a block of weight W and we are applying a force P on it. The coefficient of friction between the block and the ground mu is given as 0 0.4. We have to determine the force in order first to just push this block towards left. Second to in order the, the maximum height at which this force can be applied so that the tipping does not occur. Getting this now? Okay. So solving the first part we have to just pull this for sorry we have to just push this box towards left okay now i will draw the free body diagram of this box so when i am applying a force p here 
weight of the block is W, a friction force mu into R will be developed in opposite direction, a reaction force R will be developed here. Getting is or not? Okay. Now, in order to just push this block, in order to just slide this block towards left, what is necessary that the applied force P should be greater than the resisting force mu into R. Okay. That means P should be greater than or equal to mu into R. First thing. Okay. Now, what is the value of this R? Summation of F y is equal to 0. Then we get what? R is equal to W. Therefore, P is greater than or equal to 0 0.4 into W. Okay. Weight of the block is given which is equal to 100 kg. Okay. So, this will be equal to from here this P will be greater than or equal to 0 0.4 into 100 kg into 9.81. So, this P from here will be equal to greater than or equal to 392.4 Newton or minimum amount of force is equal to 392.4 Newton. That is it. Clear or not? Okay. Now, second part is quite interesting. Now, what it is say, it is saying that we have to determine the maximum height up to which the force can be applied so that this box does not tip. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of this tipping? Tipping means this will leave the surface and will rest just on its tip. Getting this? That means the block after tipping will be like this. This is known as tipping. So, when I am applying a force, suppose at point this, the block will slide. I am applying the force above this, the block will again slide. Likewise, there will be a point where on application of force, this block will try to tip. So, we have to determine that maximum height up to which the force can be applied so that the block does not tip. Getting yes or not? Okay. So, we will determine the limiting value of H up to which the block does not uh, does not tip or after which the block will tip okay so when the block is at the verge of tipping at that time it will rest only on this point okay that means the reaction will act at this point only getting this now the force is acting at a distance suppose h okay the weight is acting in downward direction now, in order that the block does not tip, what is essential uh, and uh, obviously a frictional force also will be developed in this opposite direction mu into r. Getting this? Now, in order that the block does not tip, what is essential? The moment which is getting developed because of this w, the w and r is developing a clockwise moment and this p is developing an anti-clockwise moment. So, in order that the, and this p obviously is responsible for tipping of this block. Okay, so, in order that the block does not tip, what is essential that the moment developed because of this W should be greater than the moment developed because of this P. Getting this now? Okay. Or you can say what? W into this distance. This distance. So, how, how much is this distance? Total distance given is 0 0.8 meter. Okay, so, this distance will be equal to 0 0.4 meter. Center distance 0 0.4 is equal to P into this distance which is H. Okay. So, just put the value or you can say this uh, for limiting condition this W into 0 0.4 should be greater than or equal to P into H. Okay. Then the block will be slide and not tip. Okay. So, this will be equal to 100 into 9.81 into 0 0.4 should be greater than or equal to P which is we have already determined 392.4 into H. So, from here this H will be less than or equal to 1 meter answer. Getting this now? Okay. Or you can say the maximum value of this H should be equal to 1 meter up to which the block does not tip and after which the block will start tipping. Clear or not? 